everybody so i am very happy to welcome all the participants for today's elsina western region meeting i extend a warm welcome to paresh ji uh, vasani with whom i share a great rapport he is a thought leader a doyan of the electronic industry and runs a thriving pcb and assembly business he is the current president of elsina so welcome mr paresh vasani i welcome the elsina secretariat team of uh, raju ji yogesh uh, rajesh they always form the backbone of elsina and ensure uh, uh, you know and uh, 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 do a phenomenal job to ensure the success of every elsina event and program uh, i a warm welcome uh, to our guests for today so, uh, two of our guests have joined in as uh, the, the very special guest uh, mr ravindra sahani Uh, who is the regional head uh, western region uh, hdfc bank i've had the privilege and honor of working with uh, 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 mr sahani as a as as our lead banker and with him in the helm banking has been a smooth ride for us you know we're just one call phone call to him and it is enough to resolve the most difficult issues so he will be representing the hdfc bank i would also like to say a, a couple of lines about hdfc bank so hdfc bank uh, is as you all know the private bank and second largest bank in in the country next to state bank of india but uh, uh, however enjoys a market capitalization which is three times that of uh, state bank of india so which 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 is uh a clearly the market speaks for hdfc bank its reputation and its uh, status as a leading bank in india so we will soon have the opportunity to hear mr sahani out i warmly welcome um, atul lal a managing director of dixon technologies dixon needs no introduction and mr atul lal also needs no introduction uh dixon has a set a scorching pace of growth uh, in the past few years and enjoy the crazy market capitalization and uh, surely uh, the credit rests with mr atul lal uh, for leading this uh, wonderful team at dixon along with mr sunil vachani and uh, taking uh, uh, dixon to this great height uh, atul uh, mr atul lal uh, also uh, I have the privilege of knowing him personally, and uh, I do consider him as a mentor and a friend uh, to uh, uh, you know uh, in in this. So welcome to all the participants. I, I I don't know if I welcomed all the participants or that got uh, missed. Uh, and actually, I'm happy to say that today we have a record number of registrants re registrants for the program. my friend haresh abichandani is also here so welcome to him also and uh, uh, a record number of registration for the program and and hope and we can see the large presence also so this is an obvious indicator of two things the sheer scope and opportunities opening up for the electronics industry in india there's no doubt about that and the content of today's program where we have two themes of tremendous interest Uh, to our participants one is the hdfc and other is the panel discussion for the pli so i would like to share a few thoughts of mine uh, uh, which is uh, we are we are a pcb leading pcb manufacturer in the country and uh, i have been in the electronic industry for more than two decades now however i cannot think of a more exciting period for the electronics industry <coughs> then what is now it would not be out of place to say that uh, the the next few years can be a golden period for the electronic industry uh, just like the it industry and uh, although the government had recognized uh, the importance of electronics industry growth of the electronic industry a few years back the advent of the pandemic has only served to greatly accelerate this importance india has been a laggard to china in the electronic industry in the electronics manufacturing 
to put it and uh, there is there is a grave need uh, for this to change and for this gap to reduce as our our honorable prime minister is very keen on this and uh, he is talking about the 4d uh, mantra which makes india special which is the demand demography democracy and decisiveness uh, which he talks about which makes india special and we are seeing that kind of decisive decisiveness particularly post pandemic and with our uh, uh, the uh, the vision of our honorable prime minister which is to make india atmanirbhar or self dependent the various ministries have rolled out policy measures such as msips specs pli for the promotion of electronics and white goods uh, sector uh, in india this backdrop provides us uh, industrialists entrepreneurs a great opportunity or a perfect environment uh, to take calculated risks and multiply our businesses there cannot be a more opportune moment in my view taking risks entails making large investments and to make investments uh, you do need the backing of strong institutions and i cannot think of a better institution than hdfc bank uh to partner with uh, uh for funding requirements and enable us to uh, fund the electronic growth of the electronic industry hdfc bank is no doubt uh, uh apart from being large there uh, whatever my experience is that they are quick agile adaptable and responsive they do understand very well the needs of the customer and work accordingly a second theme which is going to be the second theme for the day is 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 extremely exciting and will be of great value to all the participants here uh, we we uh, we have the privilege of having uh, with us uh, uh, he uh, he would be joining in um, uh, dr uh, uh, ashish kumar uh, from dpit uh, he will talk about the pli for upcoming pli for the leds and air conditioners uh, and we have uh, uh, an interesting panel discussion with the most fitting panelists which is dr ashish kumar who is who's rolling out this pli and uh, uh, two companies uh, which are uh, giants in the electronic industry today which have become giants one is dixon technologies which is known to all of us and amber enterprises also known to all of us two path breaking companies and very successful companies which have been the torch bearers for electronics and appliance industry uh, in 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 uh, in india uh, and um, uh, we have the two leaders uh, mr atul lal and mr jasbir singh the chairman and um, uh, ceo of amber enterprises and this session will be moderated by none other than our uh, mr vinod uh, uh, who would uh, you know uh, who is perfectly poised to carry on this panel discussion uh, you know very excite in a very exciting manner so having said that uh, i think i will welcome the two guests uh, when they join in uh, which is dr ashish kumar and uh, um uh, mr jasbir uh, singh so with that um, i uh, take this opportunity to hand over to i th i thank everybody for joining in and i take this opportunity to hand over to mr paresh ji uh, for his address thank you thank you anurag ji um it was a very warm welcome address by you and uh, i guess i on behalf of elsina uh, i take opportunity again to welcome all participants and uh, panelist and the moderator especially mr sahani mr lal mr singh and dr ashish kumar and my good friend uh, vinod um 
Uh, what I would like to do is that uh, I mean I'll take very minimum time and try to be on schedule as we have a very nice and good action-packed program, and uh, all of us are very keen and eager to listen to our extreme uh, speakers and uh, uh, learn quite a few things from them. Um, however, I also would like to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about Elsina and uh, what kind of activities we do and uh, how we try to help uh, support industry and members. So uh, can we go through a quick uh, presentation of Elsina uh, just to be quickly so that we can wrap it up? Okay, yes, Elsina is uh, as old as me, uh, born in 1967, so was I. So I have a special connection with Elsina because we grew up together and we are still, I mean, like, you know, there is a long way to go for both of us, hopefully. So um, um, it's, an, it's a very old organization uh, with very solid and strong foundation of uh, integrity, honesty, and uh, clarity. Um, and Elsina, is at the forefront of leading the industry, especially electronics and mechanical, uh, which goes into part of the electromechanical industry, what we call it, uh, on a component uh, industry, EMS, uh, LED, and other allied industry that, that cover under electronics. Next, please. Um, Elsina has many activities that you know we are doing. Uh, some of the activities that I can uh, summarize, uh, which are what we call as the pillars of our uh, organization uh, is the policy advocacy and recommendations uh, that we often work with uh, various uh, state governments as well as the government of India. And we make sure that uh, the, the policies defined by the government are in line with what industry needs. And if there is any anomaly or gap, we try to breach uh, uh, after various consultations with um, government and other agencies. Uh, it is evident that uh, Elsina has done a lot of work uh, in formulating and promoting electronics manufacturing industry in India. And uh, I'm very proud and happy to say that, that uh, certain schemes that we are recently aware of it, for example, MSIPS or PLI, Elsina has played a very key role in, in, in formulating those strategies and schemes uh, with, with government of India. Um, besides uh, policy advocacy, Elsina also does a lot of uh, uh, activities on business development, um, delegations all over the world, working with various organizations, uh, peer organizations, what we call across the globe, and then make sure, you know, uh, we have constant communication with various key players um, outside India as well. Uh, we also uh, are very keen to organize uh, various training skill development there is a very interesting uh, ceremony that we held uh, every year which is elsina awards and a lot of other activities i think i encourage everyone those who are not familiar with all these things uh, please get in touch with us and uh, we'll be happy to share more details next please um, anuragji has already talked about it uh, uh, the various incentives that you know uh, recently announced by government of India. I guess uh, most of us are already aware of it. I will not uh, get into the detail uh, because of the time constraint as well. But uh, various industries are already available. A uh, lot of members uh, of LC9 and uh, other electronics manufacturers within India are taking advantage of these uh, schemes and then try to increase their capacity or technology and then uh, become a very significant player as a country uh, in electronics uh, landscape. Next, please. Um, as we started with the electronics component to begin with, but now I think uh, under Atman Nirbhar Bharat uh, of Government of India, a uh, lot of uh, schemes, including PLI, are expanded into other than uh, electronics components like IT hardware, finished good products, LED air conditioners and stuff like that, which uh, we will have more details uh, with from our uh, esteemed uh, speakers. Uh, so there is a great deal of opportunity. And uh, I, I agree with Anuragji that uh, even though both he and I are in this industry for more than 20 years, we feel that the, the real time has come for us to really grow. And uh, the most exciting period of our 
career or our industry has just begun and uh, we should take advantage of it government has done a lot of uh, support and uh, which is quite encouraging for us next please um, this year elsina uh, has gone taken a different turn and uh, instead of a traditional uh, association we are also now keeping ourselves in line with what we call as a trend uh, where you know we are becoming a little bit more active on our social media and uh, we are quite uh, active on facebook instagram and uh, other things we also started rolled out our own mobile app which has a ton, ton of information uh, and details uh, that uh, members are enjoying and uh, it is constantly being updated and upgraded to to keep up with the space and demand and the content that we have uh, i am also pleased to announce that uh, the new website of elsina uh, is being worked upon and will be launched very soon uh, which has a lot of more interactions and information um, that uh, not only about the members but in general about the electronics industry in particular next please uh, this is one of the key projects that Elsina has uh, recently taken uh, uh, into its uh, fold, what we call as an indirect indirect electronics industry portal. Um, I know we are running out of time, but this is a very interesting and important thing for all the members uh, in India. So I would like to take a couple of minutes to talk about it. It's a portal uh, which has it's a very ambitious project of Elsina, uh, where all components, materials and EMS industry are going to be at one platform and then create a massive database of uh, information sharing, um, the, the products, the components, availability, uh, dealing with government uh, uh, with regards to what's coming in, what's coming out, what's going on. So it will be an excellent platform for all uh, members to, to go through this thing and will be pretty useful. And it will, we believe that it will open up a massive opportunity for all the members. Um, there is a lot of objectives that we can talk about it, but I think uh, uh, it's only 423. So the objectives are very simple. Uh, we want to provide a comprehensive information platform uh, covering entire ES demand sector. We want to facilitate posting and sharing of information about demand and supply so that we know what's going on and we can take advantage of the information that's available uh, for raw material, EMS, PCB, PCB assembly, and so on and so forth. Uh, also to create an online B2B marketplace for the complete value chain of domestic manufacturers, especially in our industry and contributes towards the ambitious target of $400 billion that has been set by government, which we think that uh, possibility is there. Um, there are besides uh, those things, there are other objectives uh, which are, um, which we can talk about in detail, but uh, I'll just quickly touch base upon it. The whole idea is that we want to bring all information that's available in, in India transparently, objectively, and uh, comprehensively on this platform. We are very excited about it, and we, we know it's going to be a game changer. Thanks. Next, please. Um, Elsina does a lot of uh, events. In spite of uh, recent pandemic, uh, we are still trying to make sure that our members and uh, the industry is connected through the online platforms. And we try to, uh, we have tried uh, uh, the best we can to engage our members and then be in touch with them in every possible way. Um, there are various uh, programs. We think that uh, hopefully post July, August, if we don't see any so-called third wave, uh, we should be able to do a lot of physical activities uh, and then uh, we try to go back to the normal way of doing business uh, and uh, we keep our fingers crossed and uh, we wish everybody safety for that thing um, there are a lot of programs that uh, are there and uh, i think rajesh is quite keen to make sure you know i finish it up very quickly so rajesh uh, and yogesh uh, um, we can we can wrap it up thank you everyone and uh, i think not too bad, 425, so we are not really behind the schedule. Thank you, everyone. Over to Rajuji. Thank you very much, uh, Rajuji, uh, and also to Mr. Anurag Booth for you know, launching this webinar or this meeting, Western Region meeting. Uh, we will quickly move on to the first, uh, you know, the first talk or session, which is on the 
funding and you know partnership model to drive indian electronics manufacturing and uh, we have you know with us mr ravindra sahani who is the regional head western region for uh, hdfc bank uh, mr sahani has been with hdfc bank i think for 18 19 years now and he heads the business uh, and you know and the of banking division of hdfc bank for western india and he has you know especially been working with you know, a lot of msmes uh we are lucky to have mr sahani with us today and the purpose is you know for our members to, you know, to understand a little bit about what are the options available for you know financing their business you know the different types of requirements maybe of working capital term loans maybe of some you know exports imports financing etc so i would just hand over to mr sahani now without any further delay uh, over to you mr sahani for your presentation please thank you so much we have i think about uh, 30 minutes for you so i think that should be enough thank you so much thank you so much uh, rajesh ji and uh, thank you so much anurag ji for uh, for inviting us on 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 this panel on this discussion uh, we will try and keep it pretty brief i will told we have 30 minutes uh, for this we will i'll try and wrap it up in 5 to 7 minutes and keep the session open for about 20 25 minutes uh, because that i believe would be more fruitful the small presentation sir if you could put it up yes sir just give me a just to give an introduction sir i have been with hdfc uh, bank for about 18 years now and i have been a career banker started my career with mahindra and mahindra i am basically an engineer started with mahindra and mahindra and then moved on to hdfc bank and uh, have been with hdfc bank for about 18 19 years on the lending side currently i manage uh, the business for the western part of india so the presentation is on sir i'll just just run through i'll not take too long sir if you could move on so just to give an msme picture sir, as to how what's the present position of msmes in india as per the data available it's about 6.3 crore of msmes registered msmes in india these contribute about 33% of the indian gdp and about 45% of the total manufacturing output comes from msmes and the sad part is that only 20% of these msmes actually have an access to formal credit channels so they have their own arrangements only about 20% of these are actually coming about a crore msmes are coming on to the formal credit channels that's the sad part i and I, and i believe the same thing happens in all industries it is not restricted to one particular industry that it happens in 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 one industry and doesn't happen in the other industry it basically happens across all industries that only about 20 25% of the msmes actually move on and come on to the formal credit channels there is a misconception i would say that banks you know which associates banks with lending that banks are lending hai paisa denge business chalega so that's that's not the only thing that a bank does and the large part of the business of a bank actually comes from the other sides the association of partnership actually with an industry is more to do with you know now at least with with a lot of decision also happening on the collections and payments so the whole thing has changed there was something called a cms earlier a cash management system in hitherto we used to speak about cms and all if you now talk about collections it has become totally digitized you can have a push and pull mechanism you can actually put in a you know have a mechanism if you supply to somebody you supply to a a conglomerate you can have an arrangement that you know, on do so and so date you give an authority to pull the money into my account so to, to, you can actually go to that extent now it has become so digitized a push you can actually do the other side also you can give a mechanism where you can tell me tell the bank and instruct given instruction that on so and so date a payment of so and so has to be made to so and so party so all this is now come in an mis comes out and information system comes out which is now now goes into your um, sap whatever you use it goes in directly and feeds it there second part which actually is is actually not looked at very seriously is the market access which a bank gives today the hdfc bank we have 5 crore customers 5 crore independent customers that we have we have platforms like smart buy we have platforms like a paysa where we actually you know give a with all the consumers a platform to come into onto our, our platform and deal with our other customers of ours so so a customer who is into maybe into consumer durables or into some other consumer electronics can actually come in put their product on our website on our smart buy solutions or put it up through our associate with the flipkart or amazon and actually get an access to five crore customers we give them incentives we are or give our own customers some incentives to actually go through our channel so there is a direct access of five crore customers which is available today and it is this is hdfc bank there would be other banks which have other set of customers again a small thing i am just touching upon we do a lot of funded facilities while we you can say this is our bread and butter 
but I'll, I'll just move on to the next slide, sir. We do a lot of funded, non-funded, but I'll not touch upon this. I'm sure everybody knows about a term known as cash rate and all those facilities. So let me just touch upon that. Let me just spend a minute on how things are now changing. Things are actually moving away from a cash rate. If you've seen the last three, four years, cash. things are actually moving away from pure collateralized funding, from pure, pure cash rate and a pure, pure term loan to more of a cash flow based funding. That there's a transaction that has come in. How do I fund this transaction? It is moving towards that. So something like a, a purchase order being discounted, a, a factoring being done, or bills being discounted. That's that's those are the simple cash flow based funding that is being done. So that's that's what is happening. The whole landscape is changing from a pure cash rate, pure term loans to something which is pure cash flow based. Because as and when people grow from a 50 crore turnover to a 200 crore turnover, obviously the collaterals don't grow, the properties don't grow, the investments actually go into the business. So how do you grow your limits? How do the, how does the bank get a comfort? So bank gets a comfort when they see cash. The paisa kahan gaya, paisa kahan se wapas aaya. They don't get comfort from a collateral. That's the last thing a bank would want to look at. There are items which have gone into a lot of comp electronic companies are now into either on the import side or on the export side. So a lot of structured trade transactions are again have come on again with a with a CMA being in place or a third party inspector being in place. An end to end transaction funding has come into place. This is something which is which maybe happened in US about 10 years back, which is now happening in India in the last couple of years. So the idea is basically to move the risk from a company to a transaction. My risk of company money, my risk is on the transaction. So I'm actually moving agnostic to a company now, and I'm more and more into a transaction. So that gives me an opportunity to lend higher amounts. That gives me an opportunity to you know, scale up faster. That gives company an opportunity to scale up faster, both sides. There are platforms like trades, which I'm not going to trade receivables, discounting platforms. So this is something which has now come in with a P2P lending or peer-to-peer -peer lending that has that is now in the last year or so taken up a lot, you know, you, very, very fast. And there is again FinTech, which is now coming in, but that is for very, very small, I would say the micro uh, organizations. It is not for, I would say, the small and the medium organizations, more to do with the FinTechs on the FinTech side. So this is how things are actually changing. I'll just touch upon the bank again, if you could move on. So just to give a perspective to the banks, sir, we do all of these things. Today, we have about five crore customers. Sir. We have about 5,900, 5,600, 5,700 branches across 300, 3,000 cities. That is what we cover today. And the larger part of the business or the larger part of expansion is now coming in from the rural and semi-urban locations. So the reach is actually now going in that side. More and more you know, changes are happening to the digitization side. So the idea is now to bring in the entire transaction digital. So today, a loan origination can happen digitally. A loan sanction can happen digitally. And with the help of NECL and NESL, the loan disbursement can happen digitally with the digital signatures being in place. So that's what is happening at the bank. So that's more or less from our side, sir. If there are anything on the bank that you would want to know, there are a couple of slides which touch upon the bank. If anybody has any queries on the bank side, we can just go through. Or if there is anything that, you know, on the banking side, I am happy to take it. I've tried to keep it very small, sir. I'm, I've taken only five, seven minutes, I believe, because it would be more to do. We'll understand you. We'll understand the industry from you and maybe give you some solutions which which would be possible. Uh, this is on the uh, bank, sir, about 5,600 branches, 2,900 cities that we cover. This is now gone to about 3,000 now. And a balance sheet size of over 18 lakh crores. Uh, that's and a lending of about 11 lakh crores. That's the bank for you, sir. So that's from my side. I'm happy to take the questions and the queries. Uh, Ravindraji, I would like uh, maybe if you can, you know, spend five minutes more. I'm you know, I'm, I'm Raju Goel from Elsina. You know, I would request if you can kindly spend, you know, five minutes more, and uh, you know, share something. You know, if you have for you know the MSMEs, you know, particularly for the small and the medium-sized companies, because you know that is a very large part of what the electronics industry is in the country today. Uh, so I think if there are if there is anything you know you would like to share with them, you know any facility which they can use because so, sir, they have I, a big challenge, you know, as you know, you know they have a big standard. Thank hmm. you. So for an MSME, sir, the standard or the most simple thing is a cash trade. That's the most simplest thing that can happen, which is which helps you, which helps the company for the normal working capital requirements. A normal cash trade, which is for an MSME today, a government gives a lot of facilities, also gives a government guarantee called a CGT, a CGT MSE for for loans up to a crore which has now been extended up to two crores for manufacturing sector. So that's a comfort which the government gives on that side. Government also helps you know, with an interest subsidy for the first one crore. 
So if you loan up to a the first one crore for MSME, they give a two percent subvention. So that's from a government side. And I would say I would not differentiate today in today's world an MSME to a larger corporate. When the the, the the way things are changing, when the way things are actually evolving, everybody wants an access to all kinds of credit mechanisms. It is very I would say a, a, a cash rate today has become very mundane. It's something which is which is which which no does not have that kind of scalability. If an MSME or a small company wants to grow from a crore of limits to a ten crore of limits, then cash rate is not the solution today. Because obviously, whatever it is backed with a collateral or something actually doesn't grow at that pace. So the new things which are now coming up are more transactional in nature. As to how do we fund it, the requirement is money. Then the requirement is not a cash rate. Sometimes we actually confuse that we need cash rate. So the requirement is actually funding. How do we fund the trans fund the company? It could be transactional. It could be a company risk. It could be transactional risk. Today, MSME for the first initial a couple of years, two years, three years, a cash rate certainly will help. The which is a very very basic product, a cash rate or a term loan to further their fixed assets. It's a very simple thing that comes in. Subsequently, when they want to grow, a mix of a bill discounting, a mix of a purchase order discounting, a mix of transactional limits actually helps them scale up. अब हम कैसे करें सर कि ट्रांजेक्शन आपके पास है या आपके पास एक एक ऑर्डर है आप आप करो टेन क्रोस के टर्नओवर है पर आपके पास एक ऑर्डर है जो बीस करोड़ का है हाउ डज द बैंक कम इन एंड हेल्प यू आप पर टर्नओवर दस करोड़ का है तो जनरली आपकी लिमिट डेढ़ या दो करोड़ रुपए की होगी इन दैट रेंज ऑफ करोड़ टू करोड़ आपको एक बीस करोड़ का ऑर्डर लेना है यू हैव द केपेबिलिटी टू डू इट यू हैव द टेक्निकल एक्सपर्टीज टू डू इट यू हैव अटअप टू डू इट पर आप कैसे करेंगे बिकॉज यू डोट है मनी टू डू इट यू कैन ड्रिंग इन फिफ्टीन करोस एट वन गो टू डू इट that is where a transactional limit will help come and help you a bank says you have an order yes i understand there is an order which which an ex party has placed is pe mere ko bharosa hai is order ke upar main order against funding karunga main seedha aapko purchase jo aap jisse aap purchase kar rahe ho usko paisa dunga so from from me i i, I have moved my risk from a company to a, a execution mere ko kya dekhna company mein sirf ye company execute kar degi kya to paisa aa jayega so it helps them helps a the company actually scale up faster कैश ट्रेड तो अवेलेबल है कैश ट्रेड अवेलेबल है या नॉर्मल स्टैंडर्ड टर्म लोन्स अवेलेबल हैं एमएसएमई पर्टिकुलरली बोलेंगे तो अ गवर्नमेंट सपोर्ट आल्सो इज अवेलेबल फॉर द फर्स्ट टू करोस एंड एन इंटरेस्ट सब्सिडी ऑफ 2% इज अवेलेबल ऑन द फर्स्ट 1 करोर 2% तक तो ये एडिशनल शॉप्स हैं इन दिस टफ टाइम्स एक्चुअली गवर्नमेंट हैज कम इन एंड सपोर्टेड विद हेल्प ऑफ अ गारंटी स्कीम अगेन फॉर द 20% व्हिच इज नाउ बीइंग इंक्रीज टू 30 एंड 40% सो दैट इज फॉर द करंट सिचुएशन आई बिलीव आगे जाके नॉर्मल क्रेडिट फैसिलिटीज विल कम बैक अगेन आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग मोर एंड मोर राजू जी राजेश जी ऑन ऑन कैश रेट एंड अ टर्म लोन बिकॉज आई बिलीव एवरीबडी इन द ऑडियंस नो आर कैश रेट एंड टर्म लोन एवरीबडी आई एम श्योर एवरीबडी हेयर वुड बी नोइंग व्हाट अ कैश रेट इज एंड व्हाट अ टर्म लोन इज सो गोइंग फॉरवर्ड हाउ डू वी एक्चुअली स्केल अप हाउ डू वी ग्रो हाउ डू वी इंक्रीज दैट इज व्हाट आई एम सेइंग अ मिक्स ऑफ अ स्टैंडर्ड एज ओल्ड प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक अ कैश रेट एंड टर्म लोन कपल्ड विद something of the new generation transactional funding which is coming in is going to the future if you want to grow faster than the not standard 10 15% if you are wanting to grow at a 25% or 30% a standard cash rate a normal packing credit may not be the solution okay so i would open it to the forum if there is anybody with a question we have about 5 7 minutes still left for the session Uh, it may be a good opportunity if anybody would like to ask a question uh, maybe one or two questions i don't think we can because you know we have another 20 minute session for you know which is interactive which is after the next uh, talk uh, or you know which is after the next session but if somebody has one or two questions please uh, we can open that up sir yeah rajiv ji i have a question yeah sir not for me for mr sani i am not the banker yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, Uh, so basically uh, uh, we have a registration on trades but most of the time what happens is the party to whom we are selling doesn't put that uh, on trades okay. in such case uh, can any bank or hdfc help sir the bank can certainly do it sir. okay so if i have to give a very simple answer yes a bank can do it after counter party jo bhi agar bank jo bhi aapka banker hai sir if it is hdfc bank hdfc bank और इफ इट इज समर बैंक कैन एक्चुअली डू डिस्काउंटिंग ऑफ द बिल ट्रेड सिर्फ उसको एक प्लेटफॉर्म पर लेके आ रहा है दोनों पार्टी को मिलाने के लिए एंड नाउ मोर एंड मोर एवरीबडी नाउ एस बी एस कम अपर ओन प्लेटफॉर्म एंड आईसीआई बैंक कम विद ओन प्लेटफॉर्म एच डी एफ सी इज कमिंग विद ओन प्लेटफॉर्म सो दिस प्लेटफॉर्म्स आर एक्चुअली ऑल्सो इंक्रीजिंग द ट्रेड फॉर द फर्स्ट सच वन प्लेटफॉर्म 
और बाकियों की प्लेटफॉर्म सारे और आपका बैंक कैन एक्चुअली डू वन टू वन अगर आपके सर बहुत सारे काउंटर पार्टीज नहीं है आपका सेल लिमिटेड चार पांच पार्टी को होता है तो सोल्यूशन बैंक के पास है आप कहते हैं नहीं मेरे हंड्रेड पार्टीज हैं तो मे बी ट्रेड्स और सच्चा प्लेटफॉर्म इज एक्चुअली सोल्यूशन क्योंकि आपको बार 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 आपका काउंटर पार्टी चेंज हो रहा है अगर ट्रेन नहीं हो रहा आपके लिमिटेड चार पांच पार्टीज हैं दस पार्टीज हैं तो बैंक के पास आप जा सकते हैं कि दस पार्टी का मेरे को डिस्काउंटिंग करके दो बैंक करेगा हैप्पीली रेल डू Mr. Sani, I have one more question. Uh, um, I am also a customer of HDFC Bank, so uh, very happy with it. Uh, like you know, uh, the electronics landscape is changing dramatically, and uh, uh, lots of uh, M and A opportunities are coming up uh, on the market. As a bank, if I were to acquire a company, how would you fund and help us uh, uh, an acquisition? So, sir, there are a lot of things that can be done uh, depending on a transaction. Uh, depends on what it is if it's an nclt transaction through an nclt the the whole funding mechanism changes what the only restriction that the banks have that they can't fund a share purchase so if it's a you know an acquisition through a slump sale if it's an acquisition of fixed assets a bank can certainly come and fund you if it's a transaction purely on share purchase then it will have to be structured differently a bank would certainly want to fund it sir and it, this this actually is increasing now with nclt having come in har bank ko ek exposure mil raha hai on acquisitions Through the IBC process, all such companies acquisition is happening. That's that's on a company which are not doing well. Even if there is a normal M and A, a bank can fund other than the share purchase. And what's your take on uh, economy going forward? How how do you think? Sir, we are pretty the... bullish on the economy, sir. We you know last year, if I just have to give you an example, uh, last year everybody was expecting a turnaround maybe by January February of this year. things actually came back very fast and we saw a lot of activity coming back from maybe september october but we rebounded much much faster than what everybody expected but now we expect that the that economy will will bounce back we seeing a lot of investment still happening a lot of you know bullishness on a major part of sectors which are the core sectors be it cement be it infra the whole all the core sectors which are there we are seeing a lot of activity there be it iron be it iron steel so everybody seems to be all industry seem to be in decent shape We are pretty bullish on the economy, sir, and we are actually bullish on the Indian industry. So our take is that we will come back much faster. Obviously, last two months, one and a half two months have been bad for the industry as a whole. Retail, hotels have taken a much much larger beating. So I believe, it, or as a bank, we believe that it's it's short term, and things will come back sooner than than we expect. the the transactional funding which you mentioned was quite interesting for uh, msmes i felt because like you said if they have the order then you directly finance the material so there's lesser of a risk to the bank and bank is more willing to fund without the collateral security which may not be uh, very easy for a uh, a small scale entrepreneur to uh, manage with absolutely learning from your session for the Uh, sir, I would uh, then just like to say that uh, maybe uh, we are you know well in time, maybe five minutes ahead of time, which is good. Uh, I think we need to get used to doing things in time and maybe before time, because we are about you know twenty years behind in the electronics industry. So I think if we keep you know making up five ten minutes every day, we might catch up. in a few decades so let us look forward to that sir uh well said if, if, if there is anything you know if i mean if there is nothing else uh, you know really in you know in this session then you know i would only request mr sahani to kindly you know, stay with us because you know, we may have some more questions for you uh because this is a very interesting subject and money of course uh, is the you know is the blood uh, stream for you know i mean it is the you know it is the blood stream for a business the business can be done without money uh, so i would request you to you know kindly you know stay with us sir you know I mean, it was a very interesting uh, you know, presentation and very informative we really appreciate that uh with that uh, i would also you know i would you know once again hand over to mr anurag dut uh, anurag ji you know dr ashish kumar is there i also see mr jasbir singh here uh jasbir ji welcome sir nice to see you here namaskar namaskar in the fikki forum you know i could never see you i only heard you because they use some you know something which you know you can't see the people you can only see you know, the initials so it's very really nice to see you here sir 
uh, you know, Atul ji is already here with us and Mr. Vinod Sharma is also here. Uh, uh, Vinod ji may also, I think, now be ready to. Vinod ji, are you there? Can you please? Yeah, yeah, I'm very much there. I'm quite okay. listening. Okay, okay, great, great. Thank you so much. Uh, so over to you, Anurag ji. I think we can start the next session now. Uh, you know, well in time and have you know good time for this discussion. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Please. Thank you, Raju ji. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's really uh, good to be on time. Absolutely on time. And now uh, I think we have a very very interesting panel discussion which is coming up. It is uh, uh, my privilege uh, and honor to welcome our esteemed panelists for today's event, for today's uh, the second theme uh, which we have. Uh, I welcome Dr. Ashish Kumar. Uh, he is the in charge for Light Engineering Industries Division, DPIT, which is the Department of, for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Government of India is steering uh, the PLI scheme for white goods, which is for ACs and LEDs, uh, which is the subject for the panel discussion today. Dr. Ashish Kumar has worked extensively in the field of industrial development with specialization in investment and technology promotion, international investment agreements, international cooperation, private sector development at the national level, as well as international level. He is a mechanical engineer from BITS, Mesra, Ranchi, an MBA from, from Maastricht School of Management, the Netherlands. I'm not sure about my pronunciation. And a PhD from the University of Wajin Engine, the Netherlands. So warm welcome, Dr. Ashish Kumar. We are really honored to have you here today. A warm welcome to uh, Mr. Jasbir Singh. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jasbir Singh, Chairman and CEO, Amber Enterprises India Limited. Mr. Jas Jasbir Singh is uh, the Chairman and CEO of Amber Enterprises. He holds a bachelor's degree in production engineering in industrial production from, from Karnataka University and a master's in business administration from the University of Hull in United Kingdom. He has more than 18 years of experience in the RAC uh, manufacturing sector. He successfully converted the business model from sheet metal fabrications to the largest manufacturer, to become the largest manufacturer of room air conditioners and a dominant player in the functional component space in a consumer durable industry. He is co-chair for the FICI Committee on Electronics and White Good Manufacturing and honorary secretary of CEAMA, Consumer Electronics Manufacturers Association. He has been awarded with the title of Man of Appliances by Consumer Electronics and Appliances Manufacturers Association in uh, November 2018. So we really have a, a great stalwart and uh, amazing leader, uh, uh, Jasbir Singh, with us, uh, really high powered for this high powered panel discussion. Thank you, Mr. Du. Thank you, sir. I have uh, the privilege also to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Atul Lal. Uh, he is the Managing Director and Vice Chairman of Dixon Technologies India Limited. He holds a Master's Degree in Management Studies from the Birla Institute of Technology and Science Pilani, Bits Pilani. He has been associated with Dixon since inception and he is responsible for the company's overall business operations. With over 25 years of experience in the EMS industry, he has served as a member of the Technical Evaluation Committee for Electronic Manufacturing Services under MSIPS, constituted by the METI, and served as a representative of ELSINA on the Committee 
or reliability of electronic and electrical components and equipments of the BIS. He also has another side to him. He has authored a book, Gita and India Incorporated. So, uh, a man of many talents, Mr. Atul Lal. Thank and you, Anurag. Thank you so much. I have the privilege uh, uh, once again of knowing uh, Mr. Atul Lal personally. And a, a warm welcome to him as a panelist. Uh, last but not the least, uh, uh, we have uh, Mr. Vinod Sharma, uh, who's a, who really needs no introduction to the electronic component industry. He's a dynamic business leader and believes in empowering people to achieve the goals of his organization. Deki Electronics, his company, is a torch bearer among medium-sized enterprises and has achieved extraordinary success in establishing world-class quality standards and environment-friendly production process. Apart from providing leadership to his organization, Mr. Vinod Sharma is a trainer of international standards and is in the, on the panel of CBI Netherlands, an organization which promotes export of products from developing countries to Europe. He has conducted training program, programs all over the world, including countries in Africa, Central America and Asia. Indeed, Mr. Sharma has been contributing to the development of the business community at large and transfers his skills for the benefit of others. He is also chairman of CII ICT committee, Electronics Communication and Telecommunication, and elected chairman of CII Uttar Pradesh chapter. So, with all these qualities, I am sure we can't have a better moderator to moderate this high-powered panel discussion than Mr. Vinod Sharma. So, with this, uh, over to Mr. Vinod Sharma. Everybody's been eagerly waiting for this exciting session. So I hand over to you. Thanks very much, uh, Anurag. Thank you so much. And thank you for introducing this fantastic, uh, you know, the panelists today are absolutely the best that we could have got for the topic that we, that we have. But before we get there, I also noticed that if you have Dhut and Vasani on one side, uh, you know, uh, you will have... Uh, uh, one of the best bankers on one side of the panel discussion and within the panel discussion we have uh, two eminent panelists who have actually accessed the uh, the, the stock market uh, so so finance is all over the place so anybody who has a finance problem i think we will solve it in today's panel discussion so thank you very much for raju for anurag uh, paresh you really put together a fantastic panel a very good uh, a very good afternoon to everybody and I think it's a, it's a very, very good discussion so far, and I hope to continue that. Uh, I have no doubt with the panelists that we have today. Uh, so coming to the PLI, I think, first of all, I'm just trying to reflect, and I see this is one of the smartest government schemes I have seen so far. Uh, so if we roll back a few years ago, I remember in Elsina and uh, elsewhere in the electronics uh, community, we always had this discussion that if you can't put a duty on some component or product that needs to be made in India, then you must give us an incentive to make it in India because in the zero duty environment, we didn't see a way through. And all of us who made this policy observation, this recommendation for many years, uh, did that a little half-heartedly, I would say, because we never believed that the government will actually be paying us to produce something in this country, given the framework that it is. So I think first and foremost, we have to congratulate the government of the day for having thought out of the box and decided to incentivize production. Uh, and that sort of paved the way not only for manufacturing of or assembly of products uh, that were being traded so far or imported so far, whether they had a duty on them or did not have a duty on them. The second thing that, I, uh, that to me seems remarkable about PLI is like a very smart uh, government, what they've done is that you first invest and you create the turnover, you create the jobs, you pay me the GST and the income tax. And if everything goes exactly as you promised, then I will pay you some money. So as a citizen, I feel very comfortable with that because all this is outcome driven. So, so far we've seen many schemes since independence in the country 
and we can all as citizens question those schemes and say whether they delivered exactly the outcomes that were desired out of those schemes and here for the first time as a pli applicant i don't feel extremely good about it let me be honest but as a citizen of india i find that this outcome orientation of the pli schemes is absolutely fabulous third i notice that for the first time almost and i might be wrong there a little bit i see a scheme which makes a difference between large multinational companies uh, indigenous companies uh, puts like in the case of the mobile phones a certain uh, value to the kind of products you will be making and only those that make above a certain threshold of product value mobile phones above a certain number uh, of rupees for example they will be incentivized and then those incentives or those thresholds run differently for indian owned companies and for mncs and in some others like in the dod scheme we have seen uh, S- smes being recognized differently uh, from larger companies so i think uh, this is on the one hand like i said an incentive a very very positive move something that we have been wanting for a long long time in the industry but on the other hand very prudent measures uh, very wisely calibrated and a lot and we blame the government sometimes for not thinking out of the box but i've just showed you three or four examples of where this has been very innovative completely out of the box thing coming to the topic for today in that line i find and correct me if i'm wrong that the pli for air conditioners and leds goes one step further you know the rigor that dr ashish kumar and his team led by mr anil agarwal uh, the additional secretary i have never seen somebody planning a, a pli scheme and actually going to some of the uh, the actors in that story uh, some of the ems companies some of the companies like mr jasbir's company ambar for example or coming to component companies like ourselves and trying to understand first hand what the realities on the ground are what needs to be done and then enriched by those realities creating a scheme where components are the you know as if you look at the budget allocation the components receive far more priority than even the final inputs and what is completely to me uh, very gratifying to note and again congratulations to all stakeholders is that the people like mr lal people like mr jasbir singh who could have quite easily said look we are the ac assemblers we are the led assemblers please give us the money we will become bigger are the ones who actually advocated a scheme saying no no we will only get very competitive and we will be robustly competitive uh, sustainably competitive in the long run only if we have a robust component body uh, company uh, industry in india and they decided to actually part with some of that incentive for and not only some of that incentive but a large amount of that incentive uh, with the wise counsel of 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 course dpiit and meiji that had some roles to play here uh, in saying no we need to at this point of time nurture enable uh, you know and promote our component industry even more than the assembling industry because the assembling part has got to some reasonable scale so i hope uh, the audience is with me when i say that uh, you know uh, paresh i think you asked the hdfc uh, you know a gentleman this question how he feels about the economy i would say the enablers to the economy the policies that make the economy the infrastructure that builds an economy those are really in place today we couldn't have asked for a better policy we can always have some caveats and i'm sure some 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 of those will emerge today's panel discussion but overall i'm very very happy to to start on this extremely congratulatory note uh, that both the industry our customer base for components and the policy makers have really put their head together Uh, to formulate what i would might might quite easily call one of the best plis that i have seen around with those words uh, let me now get to be the little nasty moderator that i can be uh, by by asking some uncomfortable questions uh, so dr ashish kumar let me begin uh, begin with you uh, like you you may have noticed i, I noticed from your uh, from your uh, you know the, the note that uh, anurag just read out that we have shared some time Uh, both uh, you when the university years in maastricht and venegan uh, and i as cbi in uh, in a country that i really love and learn a lot from netherlands uh, how comfortable do you feel how happy are you with the way this policy has been formulated and i use the netherland example because I, in my opinion they are they are really strong policy makers in that country they look far beyond what what is obvious and they create a policy that steers their country in the right direction are you happy with the way the pri has been structured so far sir 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vinod. Uh, well, you have uh, put forward a very pertinent question. Yes. Uh, as regards to the policy making, it's, uh, well, I have almost uh, more than 30 years of experience in government of India. And uh, I participated in uh, lots of uh, policy making uh, issues. But this is the first time that for the PLI scheme in DAPIAT when we started doing it, that such a vast interaction with industry, it never happened before in my lifetime, okay. This was the first experience that we were so much interacting with the industry, formally, informally, through emails, through SMS, through WhatsApp, by visiting the companies, having interaction at each and every point. That uh, and that's why the. Uh, what we so we are very much satisfied with the scheme and the guideline which we are formulating it is at the final stage of formulation it might be announced uh, maybe in a, within a week i will say uh, maybe before that as, as well uh, we are looking forward to launch this scheme uh, by mid of this month I must congratulate industry, the industry associations and the flag bearers of the industry associations where we have uh, two of them are here with, with whom we interacted a lot, I'll say, on day-to-day -day basis, either me or my uh, Mr. Anil Agrawal, additional secretary. And uh, we are uh, very much uh, uh, I'll say thankful to the industry, industry association and the person, all the persons who have uh, guided us to formulate this scheme. And I hope the industry participation will be very, uh, very positive and it will be, it, the scheme will uh, have a very good success. Our entire motto was that a scheme should be a successful. The scheme should be, of course, it is a government uh, initiated scheme, but the scheme should be, it is for the industry and what we meant that it is by the industry. It is not my scheme, it is your scheme. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sab. Yeah, it is absolutely very obvious that this you have managed to not only co-create the scheme with the industry, but the industry also feels total ownership to the scheme. And it is really incumbent on uh, not only the industry leaders that you already dealt with, but also a lot of people in the audience today, the component makers like ourselves, uh, who now have to take this forward. So thank you very much for, uh, for, for having participated with the industry in that very, very positive uh, light. But also we are all looking forward uh, to the to the detailed guidelines of the scheme. Let me now come to uh, you know Atul ji. Uh, you know uh, Atul. Uh, you know it's not easy as a business person. And I remember this. I recall this call I got as the CIA chair for National Committee from Sunil uh, Sunil Bachani ji, who's uh, Dixon chairman. Uh, so both Sunil and Atul, uh, I know are the uh, this this whole thought process along with Jasbir ji. I would say where you favored giving it to the component guys than keeping it yourself. So what is the thought behind this? Uh, thanks, Prano. Thanks very much. And thanks to Elsena. You see, we at Dixon uh, now are of a very firm conviction that electronic goods being sold in India and many categories having export potential would be manufactured in India. This is a very huge conviction and on this, the whole business model uh, has been built. Now, if one feels that only through the labor arbitrage and minimal value addition, this vision and final objective can be achieved, 
one is living in a fool's paradise. So, um, one has been thinking through it and it has been further reaffirmed in the last year or so that until unless the component ecosystem in this country is robust, this vision of any entrepreneur, any business house cannot be achieved. Further, if you see in last year and a half, the geopolitical developments, the export opportunities, the interventions by the government, one strongly feels that the industry is having some kind of a white okay point. And this inflection point cannot be successfully achieved unless, unless you have this robust component ecosystem. And uh, you see, the final product, I'll be again candid with you, because they're not a part of the IT1 system. They already have an arbitrage through tariff interventions. And already it has reached certain level of maturity. So just to share with you an example, in Dixon, we are already within the top three. Uh, globally, the manufacturers are very bulk. So the scale is there, operating leverage is there, design skill set is there. But the components are not there. The local validation is very 35%. One would like it to go to 80%. So that was the whole objective. It was, it was no sentimental reason. It's a business objective. Great. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's professionals like you who actually, I would say, uh, I don't think you see a difference between business and sentiments anymore. You, you are emotional about business, you know, and business... Uh, you've led the company so well, and uh, I must congratulate you. You know, it's really a matter of pride for all of us to see where Dixon is today. Uh, some of us have been involved with companies like yours for a long time. We saw it coming, uh, but it's really gratifying to see that it, it is actually happening now. And and even the the stock markets, the public at large, uh, is appreciating. Is is not only appreciating, is putting a skin in that game. So for all of us in electronics, I think this is this is really good to hear. Uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, I don't think any country has got rich by serving only itself. So unless we look at exports as our number one objective, you know, and not just as import substitution, I don't think we will get there. So uh, absolutely in agreement with you there. Just BG, let me come to you. Uh, in air conditioning, we are not yet there, right? Or am I wrong? Like uh, Atulji very rightly pointed out, LED is top three global players. Uh, you know, in, in air conditioning, our penetration rates are terribly low. We are not known to be an exporter of air conditioners. Where does your confidence come from? Well, uh, thank you, Vinod, for, and thank you, Elsina, for uh, having me. Uh, it's a wonderful August gathering today. Uh, you know, you're right in some way. Um, there is still a long run for air conditioners to achieve. But let me give you a different perspective. Uh, Air conditioning industry, especially the room AC industry, has traveled a journey from a few hundred thousand numbers 20 years back to almost 7 million mark. Now, unfortunately, uh, in this 7 million, 25% of air conditioners were imported and the local value add was only 25%. This is the data as far as last year is concerned. Right? Now, the basic objective of PLI was not a capital subsidy, but it was to uh, incentivize the production and make India self-reliant. That's the basic objective. First of all, let us be very clear that what is the objective, right? You can't be throwing uh, the taxpayers' money here and there just for nothing. It has to. Uh, it is. It has. It is. It is really a very well thought of scheme. And as you rightly pointed out, that uh, Anil Agarwalji and Dr. Ashish has really worked uh, hard. And uh, this is the first time. Uh, I saw in my uh, 20 years of experience that such uh, senior level government officials spending complete day in the factory, going on lines, meeting the workers, understanding each and every uh, component ecosystem, and then formulating the scheme. So what was the gap in air conditioning industry? Uh, air conditioning industry moved from few hundred thousand number to seven million marks. But unfortunately, component ecosystem did not get developed. Now, there were only two reasons. First was lack of economies of scale. And second was the price disability amongst the importing nation. 
Now, since we have reached to 7 million marks and we are inching towards the 10 million marks, economies of scale has been more or less taken care of. So the only uh, disability which remains is the price. So PLI for components and especially those components which are imported, that will address the whole ecosystem. Now imagine out of 7 million, only 5 million air conditioners were produced there. And that also with 25% value add. There, is a, there are two, three reports available by Frost and Sullivan and BCG report, which states that at a 15, 16% CAGR of the industry growth, this industry will reach to almost about 24 million in next seven, eight years. Now, 5 million at 25% value add, going to 24 million mark with 75% value add because of PLI. Now, there is a very big compounding factor. And this is the main reason why air conditioning industry has not been able to successfully export. And that was your question, basically. You know, we are, we, we are right now banking on uh, importing nations. There are a lot of disabilities, not only the price, but logistical issues, ports issues, you know, so many issues are there. And uh, there is a little bit lack of economies of scale also. So just to give an example of two-wheeler industry, now, two-wheel industry, they got a protection from government of India by custom duties. Whole of the component ecosystem started get, getting built up. 25 years back, uh, almost 95% of components were imported. Today, it is completely opposite. Only 5% components are imported uh, and remaining everything is being made here. And the domestic market grew. With this, what happened was that the local disabilities vanished. Uh, local economies of scale came up and companies became globally competitive. Now we can see the two-wheeler market ruling the world. You know, so this is exactly where LED and AC industry is heading towards. You know, first we have to reach to economies of scale. We have to cross, uh, you know, take care of all the disabilities. And PLI on finished goods specifically was not suggested because of the reason that already government had declared a ban on the imports by gas field in October which actually saw very positive results. In January, February and March, we have seen that 80% of imports have uh, you know, been curtailed. So Make in India objective has already been achieved. You know, now industry should not be asking for capital subsidy in form of PLI. You know, in any sector where PLI have come, whether it is mobile phone, uh, laptops or medical electronics, it, these were the things which are getting imported. We have seen mobile phone as a great success. Atulji is here uh, on a panel today. You know where the numbers are from about uh, 56,000 crore imports, it has fallen to almost 4,000 crores. And there was zero exports six years back. Today, 27,000 crore worth of export is happening out of mobile. So, that is this is the compounding impact of this scheme. And yes, you're right, we have still a long way to go, but I think we should we will reach there. Huge potential in the market, and PLI will be a game changer, especially in the component ecosystem uh, for the industry. Yeah, some excellent points you made there, just absolutely right. And in fact, uh, uh, you know, the non-tariff barrier that we have used to curtail imports of air conditioning is another, uh, I think, smart policy that, that that we can definitely add to that list of long, long positive policies for the industry. Uh, I'll stick with you and ask you. So, uh, for the for, for the benefit of our audience, what are some of the components that you think within the air conditioning value chain? Uh, that can be developed, needs to be developed. What are the opportunities? Uh, I know you are engaged with some of them and some of them might be described as low-hanging fruit that can happen easily and some might need a little more uh, investment and, and waiting. So how, would you, how do you see that? Well, the, you know, if we strip down a bill of material, the, largely the components which were getting imported, uh, there were seven components. First of all, was the biggest contributor to the bill of material, which is uh, compressors. Now, uh, compressor contributes to almost about 25 to 28% bill of material. And that continued to be imported. We have only one manufacturer here with a capacity of 1.6 million. Rest everything is getting imported. That is one part. Second is uh, PCBA. Now in air conditioning, what is happening is almost 65% industry has shifted to inverter AC. Now, if you strip down a bill of material of inverter AC after compressor, the main component is inverter PCB boards. Now that that 67% of inverter PCB board is getting imported. You know, there's no reason. I mean, we have capacities here. We have R&D capabilities in India. There is no reason why this kind of component should be imported. Then the uh, heat exchanger contributes of mainly copper tube, inner roof copper tube and aluminum. 
now we on one side we have companies like hindalco who are the world leaders in aluminum and industry is importing about 30000 tons of aluminum you know so th- this was a big lag i think uh, pli the first uh, i would say um, uh, foot uh, which which uh, was taken was by hindalco team you know we we in fact we uh, under uh, guidance of anil agarwal ji and dr ashish kumar and uh, dr pavan goenka ji from scale committee uh, we gathered the industry and we convinced them we showed them the data and now they are they are applying for pli for aluminum foil uh, thing so probably in 2 to 3 years time they will be ready with the whole aluminum system then there are uh, base, uh, 72% of motors for uh, air conditioners both indoor outdoor and window were getting imported so there are manufacturers like available like us but still because of price disability these things were getting imported cross flow fan which is a very simple component in air conditioners valves which is a very tiny component of 150 rupees you know that was getting imported so these are the basic um, items which have been selected in pli uh, to address the complete import uh, substitution and i think uh, compressor as well as uh, uh, motor and electronic pcb board and cross flow fan these will be the low hanging fruits which can be immediately within uh, within a span of 6 to 9 months time you will see a lot of ecosystem getting changed here compressor and copper tube and aluminum these are high intermediaries component they would need another one year for putting up the facilities and from that there onward we will see that uh, almost 75 to 80% of the requirement of compressors and aluminum and copper will be catered within india by next 2 to 3 years time super so on on the pcba itself just my uh, you know just digging a little deeper what are the components that you are comfortable with and uh, because a lot of the members in the audience are from electronic components uh, so is the pcb available here or are there issues there are we able to compete with with large chinese players like magnet for example if i may name them uh, yeah so design there, there were yeah you know there were there were two things in that one was uh, you know uh, magnet and all uh, there are two type of buyers from india especially room ac is concerned one is who gives their design and get get things manufactured or assembled one is who take complete built designed units you know so there was a lack of uh, r and d room especially nobody had developed this inverter pcb board for air conditioning industry so uh, when we acquired elgin and ever we started our uh, capabilities around r and d and we did a joint development program with infineon uh, it has been successfully launched and that has been successfully uh, you know validated as well as now it is in the mass production so that leg we have crossed so similarly like us there are other companies available even i think dixon is catering to uh, inverter pcb board and we have botra ji here today their company is also doing it we have diamond and top and so there is no dearth of manufacturers uh, it was just uh, price disability and lack of r and d uh, capabilities excellent no oh, really uh, I, i dream of a day where you know at least these pcb is will all be manufactured assembled in india with indian components or components made in india so thank you very much for that leadership Uh, atul ji how do you see it in the led i i know you are uh, equally large player in in acs but but i'd rather ask you more a led question uh, in the led component space what do you think are the uh, low hanging fruits uh, where is it that it's difficult to get the component investments in uh, this question is to you atul ji so let's say if you look at led lighting industry there are various skus the largest product category is led bulbs and then it's followed by tube lights battens down lighters and commercial lights the total industry size is around 13000 crores and i think the purchase value of inputs would be somewhere around 8 and 1/2000 crores and the domestic contribution as per our understanding is around 33% so that's around 27 28 hundred crores and that's the way it's in dixon also now in certain categories like battens tube lights our local content is almost 65 70% but in the case of led bulbs it's hovering between 30 35% now if you look at led bulb it basically comprises of three modules there's a driver circuit there's an led engine and there's a mechanical for managing optics and thermals all of them are kind of equitably distributed in the value chain as per the bill of materials concern 
So I feel that the easiest hanging fruit first is the mechanicals. Second, of course, I mean, like we have a very large relationship with the with the epitome. Most of our driver PCB is bought from them, but somehow we are not able to get the MC PCB. The economics is not working out. I feel that there should be a major push, and there's a major possibility. I think Anurag, you can of course throw much more light on that. But I would like all this to be sourced from within India. Now, passives, Poly, we have a large relationship with you, but we would like to double that. Practically, eighty, ninety percent should come from there, from from Indian sources. So, I think to start with, except for semiconductors and LED chips, that is a driver, I think LED chip. Everything should be doable in India. Everything. The only thing is that, yeah, the the entrepreneurs on the component sector side, uh, they have to break or come out of uh, a mental barrier and think of a much larger global scale, so that we generate adequate operating leverage and come up with. The cost things, which are of a global level, because definitely from Indian uh, business houses like us, and most of us on the product side are looking at Indian component sector. So I feel that uh, it's for the component sector now to accept that challenge, take the advantage of the PLI, because if you see PLI calculations over a period of five years, whatever is your capital investment, and I think it's been very thoroughly thought through. Almost eighty eighty five percent of investment is back. It is extremely good, but uh, but uh, be cautious on your balance sheets. Do not leverage much. Have your capital structures right, even if you have to part with ownership. Raise funds in a prudent way. We have a great uh, peer of ours, Mr. Jasbir Singh, who always tells me how to raise funds. <laughs> So I think keep your balance sheet correct, be in a deleveraged position, right? Uh, so I think it's a. I mean, we would like to source everything. So I think in phase one, except for semiconductors and LED chips, everything should be from within India. But uh, I would like to uh, give two quotes. One of Warren Buffett, where he said there are two mantras for any businessman. That first mantra is. Is all businesses are to create wealth and make money, and the second mantra is not to forget the first mantra. And the second is from John Keynes, because a lot of us get lured into long term, but he says long term is fine, but in, in long term all of us are dead. So strike a fine balance. But I think undoubtedly it's a great great opportunity, and we we feel that in LED lighting sector. Everything, almost seventy-seventy-five percent value addition, should happen in India and will happen in India. These are some nuggets of wisdom which are really worth their weight in gold, and I'm sure the audience is very pleased with most of them and has taken notes. Do you see there is a a kind of a case for us building this together? And what I mean by that is, as we have seen, whether it was uh, you know all examples from Far East, Japan, Korea, China, and now even Vietnam, Malaysia. that there is a sort of a road map that is discussed and agreed between component makers and ems companies or large oems like yourselves what i mean by that is today as you rightly said mp uh, you know uh, metal clad uh, pcbs there must be a gap in terms of uh, the price at which you are able to, the price at which a large component player is able to give it at the and the price at which you get from elsewhere so there is some gap whatever that excess doing it in one shot obviously is not possible and which is why this has not happened so far i have seen in other countries that they build a road map quarter wise road map saying okay you come to this volume take this price from me today i will sacrifice a little today tomorrow your sacrifice needs to become bigger etc etc and build it to a level where that indian player can be even cheaper than a global player do you see that we have room for that kind of discussions in india should they be encouraged are they possible are they practical i mean there of course theoretically oh, my first response to that is that uh, it is definitely possible now at the same time there are certain caveats to it 
uh, please appreciate that companies like us are outsourcing companies. And what are our business models? We manufacture the product and supply it to the brand owners. And I'll be very candid that these brand owners, they know the value chain of the product as much as we do. They understand the costings as much, possibly in certain cases, even better than what we do. So that means our capital allocation, our operational efficiencies, our scale, uh, our, 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 our cost of manufacturing, our bills of material have to be much ahead. So definitely our joint roadmap can be made. Uh, definitely, because it's of strategic importance to our survival now. But the component manufacturer, at least in the case of outsourcing companies like Dixon, and I'm very sure Jasbir Ji would be of a similar opinion, have to be very prudent. But from both sides, we can be accommodative. Let me show you on that. No, very so, you know, I, I agree to, uh, uh, you know, uh, Atul Ji, there is uh, actually now, I believe industry should aggregate the demand. You know, that, that is what is missing. And that is what actually automobile two-wheeler and four-wheeler people have done successfully in the last 20 years. They've had a very clear roadmap and handheld the suppliers like us and aggregated the demand uh, to create this kind of a component ecosystem. In fact, uh, under guidance of Anil Ji and uh, Dr. Ashish uh, we, as a RAC sector, what we did was uh, we gathered all the industry associations together. FIKI, CMI, and RAMA, these are the three associations which deal with room air conditioners. And we gave a commitment letter to Honorable Minister Piyush Goelji regarding aggregating the demand of the industry. If we are given the incentive and uh, if, if we are uh, given all the policy interventions which we were asked for. You know, so I think time has come. Otherwise, this, this whole ecosystem will not get developed. Very true. No, no, I totally so agree. Ganoji is coming in there. See, ideally, one would have suggested, and that works out in various industries. It works out in automobile also. There is a possibility of financial participation also. Right? And uh, if you recall, we have discussed it sometime. But what uh, the challenge in, in the two industries in electronics uh, is the issue of capital allocation. In the component industry, the asset to turnover is very low. And your contribution margin is supposed to be correctly are to be higher. Whereas in our kind of industry, the asset to turnover is significantly higher. So financial metrics are not gelling. That's right. So apart from financial part, at least in Dixon's case, apart from financial participation, if strategic cooperation is most welcome and will happen, that alignment can happen. Correct. It can be documented. Yeah, that's right. I think you're absolutely right. Maybe the financial bit will come second and hopefully yeah. that will also happen in a few years. But I think we are on that maturity, uh, you know, matrix now where commitments can be made, uh, you know, suppliers and customers can have a discussion together. And, uh, you know, like our friend from HDFC was saying, uh, they are willing to play their role. So I don't think accessibility to finance is really an issue because any bankable project will get money today. The question is... Also, I'll tell you one thing. Today, finance is not an issue. And uh, Jasbir Ji would confirm that the theme playing in the market, in the capital market, is China plus one. It's an extremely important theme. If you are able to create a business case through a global scale, then I would suggest to the entrepreneurs, do not, my HDFC friend is there, so I don't want to go overboard in it. Do not leverage your balance sheets much. Sacrifice your ownership, raise equity, go in for a very large scale. And de-risk. Right. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. I, I'm really enjoying this discussion. Let me come to Dr. Ashish Kumarji because I know, sir, you have a very, very sharp mind. And uh, it, it is apparent in, uh, in the discussions I've had around the PLI and earlier also. So you are aware, sir, that components, uh, one of the, as, as Atulji just mentioned that, the capital to turnover ratio in, in components uh, is typically one is to two in most of the components that we are discussing here. If you like one is to 1.5 to one is to two, 2.5 in most cases. Uh, the labor intensity is very high, of course. The, the skill, so it's not, uh, it's not uh, with due respect to all my colleagues from assembly, 
you can train a worker to be on an assembly line in a few weeks or months but if you look at a component making a companies like wine making capacitors or pcbs anurag's company uh, it takes us a few months at least if not longer and in my case in capacitors i know that it takes sometimes a couple of years to get a guy to be really setting machines and stuff like that. so your ability to move from one place to the other uh, your dependence on the skills the dependence on the labor ecosystem is again very high and of course the whole dependence on logistics because uh, you know as we have seen this china plus 1 uh, we have figured that having vendors close by with shorter lead times is just the the mantra we need for competitiveness uh, however what i'm what i'm coming to is that the pli scheme seems to be largely borrowing from the mobile phone sector you know in the investment to turnover ratios the kind of thresholds we have built and we always felt that the components knowing that they have a different way of uh, as atul very rightly pointed out uh, obviously the, the margins are higher you know so we are willing to sort of uh, let's say the moment we start making money in components uh, and that gestation period can be one to two years you are okay with getting less money at that point of time but is the initial years which are very difficult for any component maker so what are your thoughts on that sir is is the scheme being designed specifically with this in mind uh, i have these some of these points taken on board uh you have rightly said that we have borrowed the concept from the meti the scheme but we just borrowed the concept uh as regards to the asset turnover ratio uh, that part of it yes we recognize that in the component making the asset turnover ratio is not that much as, as compared to the finished good but uh, with the uh, industry interaction whatever value whatever things are there it is based on the interaction with the industry and, uh, i think uh, that should be acceptable to the industry and uh, they would be able to do that yeah thank you no it is very very good to hear that we are now at 532 uh, has been very engaging but i like want to use the last 8 minutes uh, that the session has been scheduled for for questions and answers so uh, you know you could give me a question you could write it in the chat box uh, uh, like i said it's been really an engaging discussion and we just got the perfect three people that we would require for a discussion like this so please make use of this opportunity Uh, anurag do you have a question i mean are, are you planning to make these metal clad pcbs and uh, if not yeah. why not yes definitely i mean uh, uh, we we are working closely with dixon and uh, definitely we have a lot of investment plans in the uh, going forward we have, we specialize in bare pcb manufacturing and uh, we have a lot of investment plans taking advantage of the government schemes Uh, and i would also like to know if the metal pcb is also getting covered in this pli of leds so we could take advantage and work out and uh, surely we have to be competitive we cannot lose this opportunity and uh, uh, not just for ourselves but as a country uh, we we just need to reduce our dependence on china and uh, even at Uh, a marginal profit also we would be very keen to uh, you know uh, make these metal pcbs in india and i will definitely uh, work closely and there can be no other better person to guide us and mentor us on this than uh, so pardon pardon my indulgence uh, anurag and, and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to what is that percentage gap that is still there between uh, you know where you would like to be on an item like that and where your customers want you to be Uh, the is gap, that a very small percentage or is it still a very large percentage? No, it, it is not so large. It can be bridged. I th I think it can be bridged. So a large investment with PLI should be able to. Uh, yes, with a if if this PLI also can give some benefit in terms of for the metal PCB, I'm sure we can because metal PCB is an important. Probably it is being covered. I'm I'm not aware of that. So can I come in here, Vinod? I, yes, I just sure. have some insight into this because I've been mean, uh, tracking this with uh, our team here. so i don't want to give a number but as anurag ji is saying the delta is not very large uh, again uh, my suggestion is that one is the deepening of manufacturing itself within the component sector i don't know how the economics works but why not even laminate in india right 
with the right capital structure right and once you have the scale uh, finally with the commitments and the scale building up uh, operation efficiency will automatically come in i make sure about it. so one delta is not very large uh, one needs to look at deepening of manufacturing process within the component sector right and i think then you are there yeah so yeah, actually actually thinking about uh, we are actually studying the aspect of laminate manufacturing this has been discussed uh, in few of our uh, sessions elsina sessions as well yeah in fact two points i would say anurag uh, uh, and and taking from what atul just said uh, one is this whole element of also us as component makers going down our supply chain down or up whichever way you look at it to our raw material manufacturers and uh, with mate we have argued i, I remember even a cii chair I've, I've been speaking with the secretary uh, urging to them that all even spec scheme for that matter must go down to a level of at least the top two raw materials that are required for each of these components because without them same story you know and and china for example has the most robust supply chain as we all know it what makes them competitive is that the other part of the supply chain is design which i think uh, you know just be you mentioned very rightly the design of the pla uh, the uh, the pcba was uh, was a case in point so i think the design industry also needs to be brought in whether it's design of materials of course the design of circuits uh, you know so if you get these two together and with what atul you said i was just thinking of a formula it's basically rm which is road maps and the leap of faith that we as entrepreneurs need to take in this journey if we put these two together uh, absolutely i am completely in agreement with all of you with the uh, with what positive changes we can bring to this industry uh, pankaj did i see pankaj gulati did i see you raise your hand or come in for a short question uh, this is a for atul ji atul ji hi pankaj this side yes sir pankaj ji atul ji during your thing you said that uh, you rule out the semiconductors is there any particular reason that you are ruling out the semiconductors because no 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 no, no. We, we 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 absolutely welcome it Uh, but somehow possibly it's a yeah it's a weakness on our end itself but somehow in led lighting uh, we are not able to do it within india uh, so you are a great organization if yeah. you take a plunge in it the strategic tie up that we are talking about will be will be happiest to have entered into a dialogue there okay, okay good thank you sir just wanted to clarify that because you said semiconductors and doing the led engine separately the semiconductor no somehow we are not able to source it in india and that's the reason i'm saying that's well, all we'll discuss with you thank you sir offline thank you thank you yeah uh, uh, sir can i sir can i ask a question rajneesh from india circuits zarur rajesh ji yes please ask uh, namaskar sir sir pcb as anurag ji is there and uh, vashani ji is there uh, pcb to make a pcb we have a lot of equipment but that goes into it in taiwan in korea and in uh, mostly in taiwan and korea lesser in china people or the companies have even making the pcbs that is split into some parts one is a drilling house another is a uh, only a, a bbt or a checking house third is only a plating house so we can make a pcb split into four or five sectors and each sector can have an economies of scale and specialization because the pcb is making a lot of technologies put together so plating technology comes into one area another technology of let's say mechanical drilling comes into another area with this background the question was since the seminar is on plis uh, can or or uh, the incentives available under these schemes if we do a pcp part making will they be available will it be covered under these kind of schemes that's my question okay uh yeah, i'm not sure who's who's the best person to answer that uh, so responding to that can i come in because yeah, we yeah. have been interfacing at least on the led industry side with the government and uh, uh, so this particular government and dpiit is not a status quo ist you know they interface and they listen to you and they really respond and it has to align with the overall objective and the overall objective is to deepen the manufacturing and mr anil agarwal has been talking to us and dr ashish kumar that go to the first level second level third level fourth level and those kind of data points have been asked for so i'm very sure uh uh 
uh, the proposal if there is the government i feel is going to look at it in a very positive way if you're deepening like this yeah we need to work on that you're absolutely right the pcb industry needs to come together uh, you know we've had great leadership from the pcb industry so let's do that uh, suddenly i think the audience is really warmed up now as the time is coming to a close so i have uh, dr shriram uh, from sirma omar basit uh, uh, raising hands so i will ask them to ask the question but there are also two in the chat box that that i would sort of throw up on the, all the three panelists uh, is import logistics becoming a major concern that's one question that comes from paresh the second one uh, more to dr ashish would be is the government also looking at a pli scheme on the security products given that security is becoming very important ccdv cameras are beginning to get assembled in india and hopefully will get fully manufactured is there a thought around that too so in whichever order uh maybe uh, dr ashish would you like to answer this one about security products first uh well as of now it is limited to only those 10 products that are the three 13 pli scheme have been announced so as of now it is limited to that only government will definitely uh, is always open to the suggestions and maybe in the down the line uh, it could be considered it depends on the success that's right yeah how we how do we pair how well do these schemes go yeah that's true right so thank you and uh, atul ji and uh, jasveer ji on the logistics do you see import logistics becoming of late uh, is it adding more to our costs etc etc yeah uh, we know then air conditioner especially uh, if we see largely the manufacturing of finished goods is happening in north india you know so and on the other side uh, as i told you 75% uh, components are coming from outside india so you can imagine that uh, you know first you are you have to get it to north india uh, and then you supply the finished goods to other parts so that's a big issue so what industry is doing is one is building a component ecosystem through pli you know that will be a game changer and secondly industry is also building up facilities in south india for the finished goods so both the things put together will resolve this issue yeah thank you uh, dr shriram uh, please go ahead with your question yeah uh, maybe a little provocative question to jasveer ji uh, see in recent times we are seeing uh, you know china is back uh, you know roaring back into into supplying even assembled pcbs some companies even telling us no it doesn't make sense to buy locally we'll just buy it from our existing chinese source and and push them to set up something in india itself uh are we are we is this a trend because it looks like the chinese are supplying at the old rate which means they are eating the uh, customs duties additional customs duties and tariffs that have been put on them and all that post galwan uh, thing has seemed to have kind of got diluted or uh, we have forgotten as as good indian so i want your comment on that sir no i think sir um, i believe that you know if you have to draw a line it starts from dot and then you stretch the dots into a line so uh, you know with pli this, this mindset will change and it is changing in fact as we as the pli notification came lot of companies started talking to companies like us or dixon or bhutra ji's company you know how to insource it uh, but you are right at the same time chinese don't want to lose their grounds they don't want to lose their share of business so they are doing whatever possible they can which even if we were in their place we will also have to we will be doing the same thing you know it's nothing wrong for what they are doing but what wrong is happening which i think uh, we all as an industry act together and get it addressed in fact i raised this point at uh, uh, honorable ministers let close that in a pcb a there are two types of components ita components and non ita if you bring a non ita components as components you pay duty in india and then you assemble this in the, on a pcb now what is happening is that uh, industry is buying non ita components they are selling to uh, thailand which is a fta country and bringing the whole pcb a on a zero import duty so it is it is a circumvention of non ita products which is happening like a deemed uh, kind of a issue you know so there are there is a requirement of hsn code rationalization now if you if you see pcba only pcba 8 billion dollar worth of pcba is getting imported now that's a that's a big no hanging fruit which as a industry uh, we should all get together all associations should get together uh, and the problem is that one pcba is coming under different hsn code 
So that is the main requirement today. It's a need of the hour, like for just refrigerator or washing machine for consumer durable industry. You know, AC PCBA can be brought under AC part. It can be brought under AC, only PCBA standard, other products category. It can be brought under any commercial PCB. So there are so many things which is very confusing and complicated stuff. So we need a HSN codes rationalization from sector to sector that will resolve this problem of what is what is happening in PCB. Oh, that's yes, good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sridham, you you'll remember that under Sanjeev Narayanji's leadership, we are trying to do an EMS task force within Elsina, and I think this needs to be also right, right. there because. Again, it's an aggregation of a lot of PCBAs coming under different names and people getting away with that. Uh, I'm Rajiv, very much part okay, of the task force. A couple of minutes more. Sir, you know. Yeah, sorry? Yeah. I'm very much part of the task force. Of course, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Raju, is it okay that I just take, there are two more hands raised and I'd like... No, no, there are, yeah, no, no, you can take more questions. We have up to 6 p.m. for, you know, Q&A before we close. Oh, okay. So we have 10, 15 minutes, no problem. Uh, I would just like to say one thing that these two points, you know, which you know with the BG has just raised, they have been covered in our report and we have recommended this. And okay. these very large numbers of imports which are coming, <clears throat> you know, they have all been shown in that in that report. Because you know, we did a very detailed study of the imports. I think we you know got some you know 17 lakh entries or something of imports. And we you know pulled out about you know one and a half lakh entries, which were of you know, PCBs, and many of them you know are misrepresentations. So they are coming at zero while they are not supposed to come at zero. Raju, would you please share that report also, if it's available with Jasbirji and also Dr. Ashish? Yes. Uh, because I think it's a very important report. Eh? Yes, yes, certainly, certainly, definitely. We'll email it to you, no problem. We have a soft copy. Right. So from Virtual Forest, we've got Omar uh, as a design company that's also doing uh, PCBAs for inverter ACs. Am I right, Omar? Uh, yeah, please speak. That's that's a, that's very nice. Thank you so much. Uh, you touched on this uh, very briefly, but uh, how much of a disability is the lack of design capability for you know electronic subsystems, specifically for home appliances and and you know specifically for inverter ACs? And will the availability of you know either open source or licensed designs uh, you know enable uh, enable this sector a little bit more? And you know will the CDM segment uh, you know accept business models like this, a license per product produced? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, there are uh, the disability is not on the price from design point of view, but it is on the timeline. Uh, so, like when we started attempting for the first time, we faced a lot of issues, and then this is a functional component. You know, any functional component means the product, final product's reputation and the brand's reputation is on stake. So, no company, uh, whether Indian, Korean, Japanese, whatever it may be, they will not approve you as a new supplier just on the go. You know, you have to cross through a validation period once you do proper R&D. Then they will uh, do almost about a 12 months, two season cycle. And then gradually the share of business grows. So it is a matter of timeline. Like we almost took close to about 18 months to come up with the first design where we faced some problems. Then we redid it. And now we've rectified and, uh, you know, we are ready for the mass production. So I think that is more important. Yeah, of course, licensing is not an issue at all. I mean, um, everybody is welcoming. So industry is basically looking for a complete solution. Like as um, uh, Vinodji rightly said that companies, we have large companies like Magnet who's competing uh, with Indian companies like us. So they have, you know, their strength is R&D and they, they, their um, innovation and the, the, we need to get up on that speed, matching their speed, you know, and uh, that is what industry wants today. They, they want that, yes, we need a solution just in time. Good. Thanks. Thanks very much, Jasbir. Uh, Kunal Kapoor from Dow Corning. So here we've got somebody from the material side. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So basically, we are into specialty chemicals, and uh, this question is a follow-up of what uh, uh, was asked earlier. So basically, we are also facing some issues like that. So companies, uh, Korean and uh, Chinese companies setting up manufacturing houses here in India under the PLI scheme, but they're still preferring the vendors uh, from their own origin countries. And though we have the products to offer, but we are not able to do that because they don't entertain in that sense, okay? So, I mean, is where, you know, the, the organizations like LCN can take this up with the government and so that 
we, we the companies like us who are set up in india since long and have been looking for this kind of uh, you know opportunities in electronics to grow uh, can find the right platform for example i'll tell you in railways uh, uh, the recent uh, you know uh, notification is that make in india products will get some preference uh, so the tenders that are floated they get some preference for the companies who are making products in india so i mean something similar i know in electronics it is not very easy to start manufacturing very very soon but at least the companies who are already set up in india can uh, you know should be given that particular kind of an opportunity to you know be part of this big organizations who are setting up the floors and the shops in uh, india you know may answer yeah please I think uh, you can definitely uh, approach uh, industry associations, and Elsina is a very strong body uh, which can advocate. But there should be a strong logic when we approach to government. Uh, you know, uh, we should go with the data and with the correct logic. Why we are asking this? Number one, we cannot stop anybody to come to India and uh, you know for investing. Uh, like in uh, air conditioner case only, in component space, there are many Chinese companies. There are many Korean companies also. uh it's a, it's a decent kind of a i would say competition there so um, i don't think so that government can go to that extent that they can stop them investing in fact we need investments there should be a healthy competition uh, and we also as indian companies need to uh, gear up our r&d capabilities and product capabilities and uh, you know cost competitiveness also but with logic we can go there we can certainly you can approach other uh, industry association also and there is one more uh, i think dr ashish is here where government is very welcoming the public procurement orders for such kind of issues uh, you know like um, in in contracts basically and in railways specifically when you spoke we also deal in railways uh, we uh, we manufacture air conditioners for metro trains and uh, and railways uh, indian uh, uh, railways so there is a public procurement order for any uh, such kind of uh, you know buying there was a new order that any any tender um more than uh, less than 2 200 crores will be definitely sourced from india so th- those kind of suggestions you can give i mean if if uh, your specialty chemical goes as a as a raw material in any component in that case i would suggest that you can give a logic of percentage of local value add in that particular component so government is very willing to listen with that logic yeah uh, it's not only one p of pli but there is Uh, pmp of uh, you know the phase manufacturing program the pma the preferential market access the public procurement order so yeah it's a slew of measures that the government is taking together and i think it's bodies like elsina that that put them together so that we have a holistic kind of look at the whole ecosystem rather than one okay uh, i think we are coming to a close of a very very interesting panel discussion i must uh, uh, you know uh, i'm really grateful to all three panelists uh, fantastic comments very well thought of uh and not just comments i think some very innovative ideas came out of this uh dr ashish kumar thank you very much for being with us uh, you know it's uh, bureaucrats like you who uh, who help us who uh, enable our journey ease of doing business is a, is, is a term which is fairly recent uh, but all of us in the industry i can only tell you are very encouraged by this huge turn that we see the shift in gears that we see in our policy making so thank you very much for all the hard work that you're putting in Uh, of course at the same time you know i'm sure you are aware that uh, while we are talking of components for these two uh, verticals uh, the chinese uh, government which is let's say a very competent competitor in some ways it ha- in my opinion they teach us uh, and they force us to do better every day so i'm only thankful to them i mean not everything they do correctly but uh, or most appropriately for us uh, but we must uh, i mean i always think that they are really adding value to our lives Uh, and they have a document uh, which i'm sure you had a look at and i think shriram's uh, team had also made it into a presentation we'd be happy to share a document by the mit in in china uh, their ministry talking about development of basic level electronic components uh, deals exactly with passives pcbs electromechanicals connectors and stuff like that uh, some transformers ferrites magnetics that level of components what they call basic level components and they have a three year plan starting this year uh, just a three year plan to do 400 billion dollars of electronic components in china uh, there is a chapter that talks specifically about 
developing and establishing at least 15 local champions, Chinese champions, and they named, I mean, they, they mentioned them saying they should have a turnover of at least $1.5 billion each in the next three years. And of course, they talk about institutional mechanisms, uh, academic, uh, this thing, materials uh, institutes coming together, very holistic way of doing this. So while we are doing a great job, uh, why I'm mentioning at the end is that our neighbor is, uh, as always, you know, a few steps ahead. And I think we need to not only catch up, we need to learn from them. And in some cases, hopefully outsmart them and outbeat them. And I think this collaborative approach that we are having between the industry and the policy uh, apparatus for the last few years really augurs well towards that. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you. Sorry, yeah, you may have some comments, sir. Uh, I appreciate your comment and uh, well, as regards to our neighbor, we must learn from them and we must recognize they are much more systematic than us. They are very good in th their thought process. They are very good in implementing the policies where we are definitely lagging behind and we need to learn from them. And uh, it's, uh, well, the way things are going on with the industry and government cooperation, I think we can catch up with them and even do better. Because one to one, every Indian is better than anyone. So, so we can always do wonders, provided we d work in cooperation with each other. Thank you. Absolutely, sir. Totally agree with you. Jasbir ji, any last comments? Uh, but thank you very much. Of course, some really, uh, really interesting stuff came out today. No, thank you, Vinod, and thank you, Elsina, and uh, all uh, industry colleagues uh, for being present. Uh, wonderful session, and thank you very much. Uh, you know, Dr. Ashish ji ne abhi bola ke hume seekhna chahiye. Sir, ek cheez humne unse seekh li jaldi. Time pe meeting start hoti hai, time pe khatam ho jati hai. <laughs> so first, first step taken, sir. <laughs> it's a good start. Uh, As always, Atul, there's so much to learn from you. Every panel discussion. In fact, uh, I will share a secret. I was going to turn down the moderation opportunity for this session because I had something else scheduled at this time. And then I saw the list of panelists and I said, no, I, I will have to make a change. And I immediately said yes to Raju. And I'm happy that I made the change. Atulji, your last comments. I was thinking that I was the reason why you changed your decision, but anyway, I'll anyway be okay. I mean, I'll manage, I'll live with that. So, you know, thanks very much, and uh, you've always been very kind. And uh, I would rate you as a great intellectual moderator, intellectual giant. Always a pleasure to participate within any discussion. So, thanks to Elsina. Uh, all the interfaces uh, organized by Elsina are always a great learning experience. A special thanks to Dr. Ashish Kumar for the whole approach of the government in interfacing and interacting with the government and uh, interacting with the industry and uh, uh, creating such schemes through such a collaborative approach. And of course, with Jasbir Ji, who is my peer and uh, yeah, who is the giant of the industry, undoubtedly. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody. Raju, if you have anything to say. Otherwise... Thank you, Raju Ji. Thank you, Atulji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also learned to finish on time. So, perfect. Okay. Uh, I will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll request Mr. Vijay Gurati, you know, who's our you know, vice president and he was the you know, chairman for the Western region to say a few words. And uh, uh, Vijay ji, you have to make them very, you know, very, very interesting because you have, you know, a lot of competition from the session. Uh, so now we look forward to your, you know, to your closing remarks, and then we close the program, please. And I would also request, you know, simultaneously everybody, you know, to put on their cameras so that we can take, uh, you know, a smiling picture for, you know, for social media, basically. So you know, if you don't mind, that will be nice, please. Thank you so much. Over to you, Vijay ji, please. So, uh, Raju ji, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I think we we had, uh, I I I hope that uh, this session should not have ended, but uh, anyway, every good thing has to be end. So uh, it's honor for me to offer a vote of thanks on this uh, second Elsina Western Region meeting. On uh, uh, behalf of Elsina, I would like to pass hearty gratitude to all speakers, panelists, for their thoughts, opinions, and views on the various topics we discussed today. 
uh, we have been really fortunate enough today to have Mr. Sani, Ms. Dr. Ashish, Mr. Jasbir, and Mr. Atul, whose companies, enterprises, thoughts have been have set benchmarks for all of us to follow uh, in their particular segments, especially Dixon and Amber in the electronics components and consumer electronics. And there, uh, there is a great learning for from the strategy growth for every one of us. I take also opportunity to thank Elsina Secretary for organizing this encouraging event. Elsina will keep bringing more of such uh, learning opportunities for all the members as we need a few more Dixons and Ambers to drive Indian electronics industry. Uh, COVID has changed the ways of living, uh, living for everyone. Uh, I'm sure everyone agrees that. In past, it was very difficult for Elsina to gather members of, uh, for physical meetings, but today I'm glad that we had a count of 64 members. Uh, attending the meeting today. And uh, I would like to thank also all audience uh, and members for taking the time to come to the forum. Uh, we have, uh, everybody has spoken a lot. Uh, all panelists have spoken a lot. So I think uh, these are my few words uh, to thank everyone. Thank you everyone again. Rajuji, both thank Jada Rita, but uh, I think this is enough. Thank you so much. I think, uh, you know, this is something which is required in order to close the session. And uh, we are extremely grateful, you know, to everybody. Uh, this has been, you know, another landmark uh, webinar, I think, uh, which is something that we can be very proud of. Uh, so thank you so much. And we look forward to anything that we can do from anybody. Please do write to us. Uh, will you. the, will, you know, Parejji or somebody would like to have the last word, please? Thank you. Yes, so I think, thank you, everyone. Uh, one of the best sessions that we heard in recent time. I, I admire and appreciate the candid uh, discussions from the panelists uh, and especially from my friend uh, Vinod, uh, Anuragji, uh, other committee members of Western region. Uh, we look forward to having another interesting sessions in the near future. Thank you. Have a good evening. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Anuragji and Elsina team for a very good session. Thank you very much.